Hello and welcome to number five in our little series of vlogs for our narrow boat home. I hope you're all keeping well. We are in the middle of lockdown at the moment so it's November the 28th. In fact we've got about a week to go before the end of lockdown. We're still at the marina. The marina's closed at the moment so we've had no visitors here and we've not been out so boats aren't allowed to go out onto the canal at the moment. We are hoping to get out for Christmas. It depends on how the tier system affects travelling or not. We actually don't know what tier system we're going to be in by the time uh, lockdown, the official lockdown is over. But hopefully if we can get out at Christmas that would be really nice. We are a little bit behind with filming and things like that. Uh, editing takes an awful long time and me being not so brilliant with technology, it's a little bit painful. I'm trying to do it all on an app at the moment and the app crashes and also footage disappears off into the cloud and I have a tough job trying to retrieve it sometimes. So we've just had a period of four days where the internet just would not download the footage which had disappeared off the app. So it's very, very difficult to keep a weekly vlog going. So for us, it's a little bit easier at the moment to do it as a series, but we can do little weekly updates with little bits of footage and up and coming stuff and let you know what's going on. And I think that's probably the best way forward for us. Richie's really, really busy at the moment. He's just constantly working and hence why quite often the introductions of things are done by myself because he's at work and he doesn't come home till really late at night and the last thing he wants to do is have to sit and do bits on camera but where he can he um, is quite happy to do some filming. We've got a lot of things coming up hopefully for next year. We've got uh, more work on the boat to do. We've got some side hatches we're hoping to get done which is hopefully will fit those himself and possibly painting the boat it needs doing and that's the aim but we have to get the side hatches done first with contemplating changing the color but we we're not 100 percent committed we will let you know about that but that will be next year back to the filming side of things i've managed to get myself a little bit more equipment and i'll have a gopro and I treat myself to a little camcorder. It's not a new one second hand, but it does allow me to uh, get some nice close-ups, which I think would be nice to put in some of the footage in the vlogs that we're doing. So basically that's it for now. Uh, I hope you're really still enjoying watching what we're doing and I hope you find what we're doing on the boat interesting. There's loads more to come. Marina life, I guess, isn't the most exciting. We're not out and about on the canal. We won't be for some time. You know, the, the nearest we can sort of get out is maybe a little bit for Christmas and possibly in the spring while we're going to be doing some work on the boat. But that's life and at the moment that's what it is. But I still hope that you'll stick with us and um, let us know what other content that you like in the vlogs. During lockdown, it is really difficult to keep content um, up there or exciting, but you know we, we're doing our best to bring you what we feel is uh, a nice represent representation of our lives, boat life and marina life. So take care and we will see you on the next one. Bye for now. It was early November, the leaves were turning fast now, and as the month progressed, the fire of autumn's colour floated to the ground, and just like that, the trees were almost naked. The reeds that were once green and lush had now taken on the colour of ripened wheat.
the acorns had ripened and they were ready for all the hungry little creatures to eat, helping them to survive the coming cold winter months. We had had some horrible cold wet weather, but on occasions we were blessed with some dry weather and beautiful sunsets. And as the light began to fade, it was around this time, the northern winds whispered through the rustling reeds and told them of change to come. And in turn, the reeds told the birds that change would come. And so they said goodbye to their roost for the final time and tomorrow things would look completely different. And 24 hours later, the reed cutter that had been working its way around the marina clunked and rolled into view. It made short work of the reed bed. The fallen reeds were scooped into a skip truck that put them into piles temporarily until they were all removed when the job was done. The marina looked rather barren and was scarred by caterpillar tracks. But these jobs have to be done so the reeds don't overtake the jetty. They are cut back every three to five years. With the reeds removed we now have full views of autumnal sunsets. Next morning, we were back to cold, wet, stormy weather. 
The reeds that had given us some protection against the strong westerly winds that gusted into the marina had now gone, so Sapphire got the full impact broadside on choppy waters. Because, yet again, the work we planned to do had been rained off, and of course we were in lockdown, so there wasn't really much to do. So we decided to have a chill morning, and of course, we have to have our full English. Enjoyed our breakfast, Richie decided there were one or two jobs he'd like to do. So what's today's job, Richie? <laughs> Owing to the fact there's a storm raging outside and I can't cut any more wood to finish off in the engine room. So the stern gland piece I just needs topping up. So that's today's job. Which of course should be attached somewhere rather than floating around like this, but uh, So how often would you top that up? Just, you can see when it's getting... Ah, oh, there's a lot of suction on this. There we go. <laughs> when, you can see how much travel there is on that. So oh, when right, this starts okay. to, the plunge is down at the bottom, all the grease is gone out okay. of the chamber. So, it's easy to know when to, to, to top it up. Okay, so you have to roll that back down to the bottom so that the travels right yeah so you can get yeah. you can get that a fair bit of grease in there you only get so much in you never get it full so how often would you grease the stone gland then well as often as that runs down to the bottom of its travel but is there like a specific no no, no. as long as there's, so long as there's grease in there Which there isn't a lot actually if you look you can see how little is in there i can't see you have to point it upwards so oh gosh yes yeah, so well, this is a this is a waterproof grease so what actually is a stern gland uh, right it's the uh it's the wrapping the rope wrapping that goes round the prop um, and it stops any ingress of water stops any ingress of water from uh, the outside coming into the boat okay. and this uh, grease uh, when you tighten the handle up it pushes that plunger down and sends the grease down the tube and into where the uh, the rope is wrapped around. So. We go. It's a 
a bit of a messy job always, but uh, the hardest part is not to cross the thread when you're starting this up. Carefully. There we go. There we go. Just tighten the top down. Being careful not to pull too much on this, and then it's actually a lot easier to do having it unattached. To be honest. So I think you're right, we might have to look at a little there uh, clip system where it slots. Yeah, just a, a clip. Maybe it slots in. Yeah, that's all right. Anyway. Somewhere like that would be ideal. And then just yeah. unclip it when we remove the steps. Yeah. So I will investigate what we can do with that. Now this, because obviously there will now be some air in there. This tightens. And we'll leave that now. Let it settle, come back maybe late evening and just uh, turn it back in again and it will, uh, you'll find it will have settled. You see how much more travel there is now, so you know when this gets down to the bottom of there, it's time to fill your grease tube up. Uh, that gets turned every time you use the engine, uh, before you go out and when you stop. Um, because obviously that's when the props doing its work um, and if you leave your boat for weeks at a time it's always handy to come back every week or two and uh, turn that because though you don't want any water dripping into your bilges from outside and uh, it's the grease water resistant grease uh, that's all I've ever used Morris's Nice, but go and wash your knife now. Thanks. Luckily, Jeff didn't snaffle our pizzas. The days are rapidly getting shorter and the nights are getting longer. This evening was another beautiful sunset. Later that evening, Richie put the bed up and I took myself off down the jetty as I often do. Jeff didn't fancy a walk, so I left him behind on the boat.
When I finally get back on board Sapphire, the boys are already settled for the evening. It's chilly at night, so what better than to throw a log on the fire and have a hot cup of tea. So stay safe, warm and well, and take care everyone. <laughs>